Now that you've been introduced to the concept of ARIO in general, very overview of it. We are going to study each of these four factors in order and with more detail. And we are going to start with the first factor, looking at the atom with the formal charge. Remember that the factors of ARIO are to be analyzed in order, which means that we always start with the first factor, comparing the atom with the formal charge. When we're applying this factor, we are literally comparing for each molecule in our set, compare which atoms have the formal charge. Now, in the last video, I talked about how when we are being asked to compare or predict stability, reactivity, instability, etc., this is usually being asked in terms of a set of molecules. So usually we are given a set, like in this case, a set of four, and we're being asked to rank them in terms of their stability or rank them in terms of their reactivity or something along those lines. So here are the four molecules that we are going to compare and apply the first rule of ARIO, which atom has the formal charge. So for each of these molecules, that's how we're going to start. We're going to focus on what is the atom with the formal charge. In the first one here, we have an oxygen that has oxygen that has a negative formal charge. Oops. And in our second molecule, we have no formal charges at all. Sometimes that's going to be the case. Sometimes we'll see positive formal charges. In the third molecule, we have a nitrogen that has a negative formal charge. And it's important not only for us to see which molecule has the formal charge, but what the formal charge actually is. In our last molecule, we have a carbon that has a negative formal charge. So let's take that information and let's use that to predict stability. What we're doing here is thinking about um, which of these, these atoms are best at holding the formal charge that has been given to them. Now, right off the bat, first of all, when we are dealing with a molecule that has no formal charges at all, remember what that means. That means that all of the atoms in that molecule are in a perfect bonding environment. That molecule is happy. All of its atoms are happy. All of its atoms are in an ideal situation. No formal charges at all makes this molecule very stable. It is, of, of all of them, it is the most stable out of all of them because it's the only one with no formal charges. This molecule being stable means that it is not reactive or very little reactivity. So of this ranking, we are going to give this molecule the most stable ranking of the four. This is the most stable. And let's say most stable is going to be number one. So now that we've got that one out of the way, let's look at our other three. We have an oxygen, a nitrogen, and a carbon, all with negative formal charges. When we are looking at atoms with negative formal charges, we are going to rely on our understanding of electronegativity. Electronegativity is a numerical measure of how how much an atom desires to have extra electrons on it. So of these three atoms, the one that is the most electronegative is going to be the best at holding that negative formal charge. So we need to look at a periodic table to compare oxygen with nitrogen with carbon. Let's find them on this periodic table. We have oxygen right here, we have nitrogen right here, and we have carbon right here. And let's also remind ourselves of the rules of electronegativity. Electronegativity increases as you go from left to right, and it also increases as you go from bottom to top. So of these three atoms, oxygen is the most electronegative because it is further to the right in, uh, of these three. So oxygen being the most electronegative means that it is the best at dealing with that negative formal charge. 
It's good at dealing with that negative formal charge, which means that it is, of these three, it is the most stable of these three. Because again, because it's okay with that negative formal charge. So we'll call this guy the next most stable. We'll give it a ranking of number two compared to what we did for cyclohexane. And for the nitrogen and the carbon, let's look back at the periodic table again. For nitrogen and carbon, nitrogen is the next most electronegative element. So that means nit nitrogen is going to be number three in terms of stability. And carbon will be the least stable.